dear participants welcome to the last week of our discussions on body language in this module we would take up para language and its connotations in the context of non verbal aspects of communication para language is everything except the meaning of a word in a voiced statement we can say that it is what is left and perceived after detecting the verbal content or the meaning from a speech para language as the name suggests it exists on the periphery of language para language is considered to be a component of meta communication its elements for example voice speech pitch pause rhythm volume stress and tone modify the meanings of what we have to say and at the same time add nuances to the spoken word we can understand that all oral messages have paralinguistic component because every message communicates not only the meaning associated with the literal understanding of the words but at the same time how the words have been spoken by a person to add the connotations and feelings and emotional aspects to it it is we can say the how of an utterance where is the language is what of the content it is how we have spoken a word and often we find that how we say is more important than what we say para language or para linguistics as an independent field of study was developed by george trager an american linguist during the 1950s george trager was a close associate of edward sapir benjamin lee wolf and charles hockett other famous linguists of this era during the 1950s george trager was working at the foreign service institute of the department of state in order to train diplomats before they were posted to different lands and here he was working with edward t hall and ray bird wissel as we have already seen ray bird wissel had developed the studies of kinesics and edward t hall had worked on proxemics it was in association with these two other people that george trager developed his understanding of paralinguistics Trager worked on using descriptive linguistics as a model for para language and his findings were published during 1958 and early 1960s his work has laid foundation for later research in this area particularly in the area of investigating interconnections between para language and culture para language is the study of how a speaker verbalizes a particular content the prefix para means beside or side by side and denotes those activities which are auxiliary to or derivative of that which is denoted by the base word para language similarly is everything which is in auxiliary to language in the ancillary roles we find that the association of the word para requires something which needs better training etc for example as in paramedics researchers have found that the tone pitch and quality of voice as well as the rate of speech conveys emotions that can be accurately judged regardless of the content of the message in their findings in association with ray bird wissel various researchers asked participants to recite the english alphabet in such a way that they are able to project a certain mood or emotion to the listener alphabet of a language does not convey any content at all it is a most neutral component of any language but even in this recitation audience were able to almost correctly pinpoint the association of a reading with a particular emotion so these type of researches laid the background to this understanding that when we speak we do not only voice the content projected by the meaning the lexical meaning of a word but we also project an understanding or we pass on signals related with the emotions and feelings associated with that word or with that situation 
On the basis of listening to the other people's voice, we can easily make out not only the emotions and feelings of the other person, we can also understand certain other aspects of that individual's personality. We can understand the regional associations and social backgrounds of the person. We can understand the economic affairs of that individual. We can also make a very shrewd guess and assessment of the broad categories of work or the nature of work with which that individual is associated as well as we can find out a lot about the intellectual level of that person. And that is why we find that telephonic interviews are still considered to be a successful tool in the process of hiring people. In literature and awareness of different aspects of nonverbal communication has always been there. An understanding of the para language and its significance in our social life has also been a clear literary understanding. In this slide, we look at a scene downloaded from the famous movie My Fair Lady, which was released in 1964. As many of you would know, My Fair Lady is an adaptation of a play by George Bernard Shaw, his play Pygmalion, which he had penned in 1912 and which was a stage in 1913. This play is a satire on the British class system and how our understanding of the British class is based on our capability to use a proper accent during our conversation. Shaw's character Professor Higgins is an expert of phonetics and he tries to coach a cockney flower girl and is able to pass on this young flower cockney girl as a duchess within a couple of months in his friend circle. All right, Eliza, say it again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Didn't I say that? No, Eliza, you didn't sigh that. You didn't even say that. Now, every night before you get into bed where you used to say your prayers, I want you to say the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain 50 times. You get much further with the Lord if you learn not to offend his ears. Now for your H's. Pickering, this is going to be ghastly. Control yourself, Higgins. Give the girl a chance. Oh, well, I suppose you can't expect her to get it right the first time. Now come here, Eliza, and watch closely. Now. And you see that flame. Every time you pronounce the letter H correctly, the flame will waver, and every time you drop your H, the flame will remain stationary. That's how you'll know if you've done it correctly. In time, your ear will hear the difference. See it better in the mirror. Now, listen carefully. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. Now, repeat that after me. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. Oh, no, 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 no. I have no ear at all. Shall I do it over? No, please. Start from the very beginning. Just do this. Go, ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Go on, go on. This is a clear indication of how para language suggest different aspects related with our personality and background. In order to understand paralanguage, we have to understand different signs associated with it. And these are volume of voice, speed of voice, etc. The volume of voice shows our feelings. If it is a whisper or a loud voice or are we shouting? So it showcases our feelings and our attitudes as well as our response in a given situation. A slow voice can show our timidity, our diffidence. In the same way, the speed of voice suggests our attitudes and our feelings. If it is slow, then it suggests our hesitation, our lack of preparedness, our sorrow for instance. If it is fast, it can easily indicate our agitation. Similarly, we find that intonation, our tone, our pronunciation 
and the clarity of articulation are also important. These aspects we would take up in detail in the next few slides. Similarly, our understanding of pause as a substitute of the punctuation marks is also important. Some pauses may be temporary which may indicate our uncertainty and hesitation whereas some other may be like caesura or the dramatic pauses which are planned and show our control of the content and our desire to control the audience reaction. Our voice quality is important. It conveys the message and at the same time it also complements the understanding of this message. Our voice enables us to say a particular word. Our voice enables us to say the content in a particular manner. Voice controls how we say a certain thing and by accenting different aspects of an utterance, it modifies the meaning of what is said and can be a major indication of feelings etc. For example, all of us know that if we are speaking in a monotonous tone, it suggests a bored attitude. If our voice has slow speed and low pitch, it shows our depression. High pitch is normally associated with enthusiasm and eagerness. High pitch but a long drawn out way of speaking suggests our disbelief. Ascending tone suggests astonishment and abrupt speech also shows our defensive attitude. So, these aspects of voice are important in order to understand different paralinguistic features and would be taken up in detail individually. Paralanguage can be used intentionally also. In most of the situations, it is an unintentioned use where our feelings and our emotions are automatically transmitted and signaled to other people. But it can also be used in an intentional manner in order to complement the communication. It can also be learned to pass on in a particular social situation. Paralanguage can be further divided into three categories as of primary qualities. Secondly, modifiers which can be further subdivided into qualifiers and differentiators and thirdly, the alternates. In the primary quality of paralanguage, we refer to the characteristics of voice that differentiate individuals. The pitch, the volume, the resonance, the intensity or volume, the range of the intonation, the voice register, etc. These are differentiated because of the size of the vocal cords. They are also differentiated by the gender and also by age and also they are differentiated on the basis of the geography. These qualities are shaped by biological, physiological, psychological, cultural and social features. Basically primary qualities are elements that while being first considered as indispensable constitutes of verbal language may also modify it or alternate with it as paralinguistic phenomena. Voice continues to remain the primary tool of communication despite various technological developments. We find that the absence of voice hampers our performance and our capability to interconnect with other people. Human voice conveys the meaning or message and heightens the importance of the most difficult element of speech delivery that is effective articulation and voice modulation. The clearer the voice, the more effectively it will convey the meaning and it also informs us of the speaker's gender, background, education, training, attitude, temperament, etc. The aspects which we would discuss in detail under it include pitch variation, speed of speech, pause and voice modulation or waviness. In all those professions where our performance is directly linked with our voice, voice has to be first worked on at a physical level to unleash its full natural potential. For example, in professions like singing, acting, as well as for professional speakers, we find that the voice has to be trained. But in paralanguage, we look at those aspects of language which we come across in those professionals where this type of training is not included.
pitch refers to the varying intensity of the voice. It refers to what the listener is capable to hear as high or as low tonal properties to rising and falling voice patterns. The pitch of human voice is continuously variable and is necessary to make our speech effective. People who speak in monotones come across as highly monotonous speakers and the audience immediately lose interest. It is not necessary that people who speak in a monotone speak in a low pitched voice. Sometimes we may feel that the person may have a booming voice and still may end up speaking in a monotone. Tone is the phonological correlate of pitch and pitch variation and can serve different purposes across languages affecting the meaning of a word and communicating it clearly to the audience. A single sequence of words can have different meanings depending on the tone pattern with which it is spoken. Whether it is produced or is spoken at a continuous high level, a rising level or at a falling level. Pitch variation expresses the intention of the speaker. For example, a person may come across otherwise as a confident person. The facial expressions may be controlled, the handshake may be strong, but if the voice has tremors, then the lack of confidence or tension in the given situation becomes apparent. Intonation and stress blend together. They help us to conclude whether it is a statement or a question or an exclamation. Stress on a particular word may alter the meaning. The stress can be either a linguistic one or a deliberate one. The linguistic stress which is a part of our language training tells the other people about our educational background, the social class. On the other hand, the deliberate stress on a particular syllable or on a particular word communicates our meanings and indicates our feelings towards the other person. Tone of the voice tells us about the attitudes and feelings of the speaker. These signals, however, should always be taken as a part of the total context of the message and never in isolation. And we must consider these signals as well as the words in totality, the sentences in totality and combine the interpretation with other kinesic features to fully interpret the significance of an utterance. The speed at which we speak is also important. We speak at different speeds on different occasions and also while we convey different parts of a message. The speed of a speech is measured by the number of words which are spoken within a minute. If the speaker's average speed is very slow, the listener becomes bored and impatient. On the other hand, if the average speed is too fast, the listener does not have enough time to interpret fully the message and therefore would also end up losing interest. So the speed of the words has to be measured. It should neither be too fast nor too slow. The speed of the speech is also related in many ways with the content we have to deliver. Even in official presentation, we find that as a general rule, we present the easy portions of our message and presentation in a faster speed and the complicated parts of the information are passed on in a slow manner because it is thought that understanding of difficult or more technical part of the presentation require better understanding and more focus. It at the same time indicates our emotional state too. We tend to speak in a fast manner if we feel anxiety or there is a certain urgency in the communicated message. On the other hand, when we are relaxed, our speed also becomes comfortable. The cultural aspects in the rate of speech are also apparent. Researchers have commented on the speed of Italians and people of the Arab country and they comment that they speak in a faster manner in comparison to people of the US. In the same way, we find that the regional differences also exist in the way people speak within the same country. We find that in certain provinces or in certain parts of the country, people may adopt a faster pace, whereas in some others, people may adopt a slower pace. 
difference in speech rate causes problems in understanding the intended message. Therefore, the speed should always focus on the audience and then the speaker should be able to introduce variations in the speed. Our para language communicates different messages to the other people on the basis of how we pass on our messages. Examples of these paralinguistic features particularly pitch and tone in the famous American sitcom Friends can be viewed where they have been used in a hilarious manner. If you two are happy then I am happy for you. I am fine. Really? Absolutely. I am fine. <laughs> totally fine. I, I don't know why it's coming out all loud and squeaky because really I am fine. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> well, I guess Joey went home. Oh, and look, there is still one box that I have to unpack. <laughs> oh, my God, you almost gave me a heart attack. Oh, still in bed at 10 and work again at 8. My best friend and my sister, I, I cannot believe this. Well, I'm sorry, but it, it's true, I, I love him too. My best friend and my sister, I, I cannot believe this. If the previous video had taken up the hilarious aspects related with paralanguage, the current video in a serious manner suggests how tone, pitch, rhythm, Face and voice have profound impact on those people who have to communicate with a large audience. The given link can also be further accessed in order to listen to the complete video. I am showing only certain excerpts from the complete one. There's its tone and pitch. We have to choose between change and more of the same. It's speed. We have to choose between looking backwards and looking forwards. And rhythm. We have to choose between our future and our past. Past, past, past. Barack Obama's voice seems very natural, but most politicians work very hard to achieve a sound that impresses the voters. Body language and particularly voice tone have a profound effect on how well you communicate. Normally, as people rise up the rungs, the more noticeable they are, the more likely they'll have coaching. So by the end, most politicians at the very top will have thought about their bo body language and especially their voice tone, how deep their voice is, and how modulated and slow it is. Please now, I personally think they had ideas, but they were bad ideas. They were bad ideas for America. Female politicians have an additional hurdle to overcome with male voters. Research shows that a woman's voice actually affects the emotional part of a man's brain. So he automatically thinks women are so emotional when they speak. A very important aspect which is related with our paralinguistic features is pause. The speed of speaking is also accompanied by several pauses. These may be unintentional also, those ahs, ams, etc. When we are trying to focus on what needs to speak are the arbitrary pauses which spoil the impact of our speech. The pauses which are intentional and are a part of a planned pause at the right moment add to the overall impact and significance of our speech. They are very much like the dramatic pauses, like caesura. Caesura is a Latin word for cutting. It suggests a break, a grammatical boundary, a pause which refers to a point of articulation. The word caesura is also used in music to suggest a silent pause. Caesura is often used in poetry. A very interesting example is from a nursery rhyme. Sing a song of sixpence a pocket full of rye, 
four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. In formal speech also we find that it suggests our capability to introduce a right pause in such a way that it prepares the audience to receive a significant portion of message. We can never continually speak without inserting a pause. If we can emphasize the upcoming subject with the help of a planned pause, then it would enable us to hold the attention of the audience. During a conversation, those unintentional pauses, those arbitrary pauses, which are also called non-fluencies are often inserted with sounds and utterances like O's, arms, etc. A careful use of these non-fluencies can also add to the fluency of the speaker and give her time to relax. But these should always be planned. Sometimes a good speaker can also train oneself to use them effectively. For example, all those teachers who are unable to answer to a particular question by a student would deliberately introduce it. Hmm. Oh, yes. So, they would keep on listening with these non-fluencies and it would give them time to plan. In general, we can say that the pause should never be accidental. It should always be a part of careful planning in a professional dialogue. The functions of plant pauses are displayed in this particular visual. The different ways in which we can use a plant pause are succinctly presented. They build up suspense and emphasize the word or sentence that follows. They also give time to the listener to assimilate the word particularly for the dramatic announcement which is likely to follow. They also increase the impact of the projected feeling and break the continuity of thought making the listeners bored. Voice modulation or waviness is important for a clear communication of the message. In general, we can say that we should be loud enough so that the audience can hear us. In large gatherings, when we have to use the mic, we should have the technical competence to use it properly. The loudness of our voice with or without a mic should be adjusted to the size of our audience. Further, in order to maintain the interest of the audience, the voice should be enthusiastic because only an enthusiastic voice would convey our interest and excitement to the audience and it would be infectious in this context. In small groups and particularly in dyadic conversations, we do not have to exaggerate voice modulations because it could be easily heard and understood. However, in group situations, we have to learn to exaggerate the voice modulation and inflections, particularly when we have to demonstrate some kind of emotion or highlight a point. In a large group, it is easily lost. At the same time, we should avoid monotone. A low droning voice always has a soporific impact on the audience and makes them lose whatever little enthusiasm they may have for the interaction. An increased volume normally indicates an angry person. On the other hand, a level and measured volume of the voice suggests a better empathy, the willingness to talk, to listen and to negotiate. An increased rate of speech can also indicate a hurry or an impatience on the part of the speaker, whereas a decreased rate could also suggest a reflective attitude. So, loudness of volume between softness and loudness can differentiate in correlation often with a lax or tense facial musculature and gesture perfectly congruent with the internal muscular effort between, for instance, a soft, compassionate, epicolabular click. Cultural differences in volume of speech are also apparent. And here I quote from a research by Martin and Cheney. They have found that Middle Easterners speak loudly because they associate volume with strength and sincerity. Speaking softly for them would convey an impression of weakness or insincerity. 
Germans also feel according to this research that using a commanding tone is better while a person is speaking because it would be equated with self confidence. On the other hand, people from Philippines speak softly, associate a soft speech with education and good manners. They have also suggested that the Japanese also associate using a soft voice with good manners and think that speaking in a loud voice suggests that a person is lacking self control. Certain researchers also find that the volume of speech is also conditioned by the city density where the people are from. A person who has spent a lifetime in a dense city would tend to use a relatively low volume in comparison to a person who has spent a lifetime in a sparsely populated place. And those people who are from less populated places tend to use a higher volume. Another aspect we have to consider is modifiers. This is the second paralinguistic category and encompassing qualifiers and differentiators are a series of vocal effects produced by factors for example like the direction and characteristics of respiratory air. It is controlled in the vocal bands and how do they vibrate by certain changes in the pharynx, by the position of the soft palate by the articulation as it is produced in terms of muscular tension and position of the organs. Also by the anatomical configuration, shaping of the lips and the lower jaw. It can also be arranged as they appear before the observer in contrastive sets. But the terms of these polar pairs can differ by as many degrees as we want for our own analysis. From a middle point, Poyatos has preferred to call medium rather than normal and distinguishes two groups of modifiers. They are qualifiers and secondly differentiators. Qualifiers are those modifications of the voice which are caused not only by the changes in the area between the thoracic cavity and the mouth and nose, but also by facial anatomy. They include breathing effects, for example, whispery voice, laryngeal effects, for example, the creaky voice, the harsh voice, the tense voice and others created by pharyngeal control and nasality. Speakers differ from each other in terms of voice quality and we are able to recognize individual voice even on phone because of this capability only. They also introduce quite a lot of variation into their voices for particular purposes. A considerable amount of research in this field has equipped us with a better understanding of the meaning of such terms as creaky voice, breathy voice and harshness. Even though these words were used earlier in a blanket manner, but now the scientific interpretations have enabled us for a better understanding and connotations of these terms. A laryngealized or creaky voice is also referred to as a glottal fry because of its bubbling quality, a frying like quality. It is phonological in certain languages, but paralinguistically also uh, besides being caused involuntarily by physical exertion or pain or old age for that matter, it is also used in an attitudinal manner. For example, it can express boredom or reluctance, oh not now or suppressed rage, how can you? It can also suggest affectionate admiration or sympathy. Oh, just look at that sweet kitten. Coaxing adults, also the affectionate or babyish purring voice are known as creaky voices. The American actor Vincent Price is famous for his excellent creaky voice in menacing moments and it has always been referred to by researchers working in this area. A breathy voice is associated with passionate speech, true or false. It is a sigh like mixture of breath and voice, it is not quite a full voice so to say. We find it often used in TV advertisements which are based on the sales of perfumes or comments on the smoothness of fabric for example or any advertisement which has emotional reactions associated with it. It is often produced by the inhaling phase of a sigh, oh I love you. 
It appears also in situations of weariness facing a difficult decision or question. It is often combined with a certain whisperiness in these situations. We can quote the example of Merlin Munro who is known for her breathy voice. Harshness is related with a disagreeable rough voice. It is caused by laryngeal strain and tension, extreme vocal fold contact, irregular vibration and low pitch. In languages, we find similar synonyms, for example, grating voice, metallic voice, raucous, rasp, rough, shrill, etc. It adds to the meaning of negative attitudes and feelings like anger, ridicule, etc., as well as violent emotions to verbal languages or paralinguistic alternates. A husky voice is understood as dry and rough. In some cases, it can also be perceived positively as being seductively sensual in the context of certain women. However, it can also be understood as a negative quality in those contexts where women are being judged as mannish in patriarchal context. For practical purposes, it could be associated with more normal, deep, soft or whispery voice. Holt's voice is normally applied to pathological forms of rough voice. It imp seems to imply a quality acquired through negative activities, conveying a poor image or a poor health image of the speaker. Differentiations are the modifications of verbal utterances which occur independently but are never devoid of the interpretations associated with language. They include sound constructs such as laughter, crying, etc. Most typical differentiations are grouped according to their basic characteristic and by degrees. The basic characteristics, for example, point to those which like laughing form a whole class with different nuances and also possess cultural and subcultural varieties. The more common differentiators include whispering, the loud voice, crying, laughing, complaining, etc., with various synonyms. Some modifying factors that might be taken for differentiators are may be caused by the conditioning background and they should not be overlooked. For example, an individual might be speaking with a pipe in mouth or there may be certain health reasons for a particular type of voice quality. Alternates refer to those vocal sounds which occur independently of verbal utterances. We can describe them as language free size, voluntary throat clearings, clicks, inhalations and exhalations, hisses, blows, slurps, etc. Ingressive sounds occur more commonly as paralinguistic alternates, for example, a gasp of terror an increase of physical pain. Voluntary as well as involuntary aspects of alternates are visible. For example, a voluntary tongue clicking in impatience, an involuntary reaction ooh, if suddenly one is hurt. They may be conscious as well as totally unconscious. While most are single, we find that some are articulated into phenome-like sounds such as foo, boo, ps, etc. Many others show no clear articulation and consist mainly of audible air frictions such as a sniffle, a pre-speech pharyngeal ingression or an egression of impatience. Differentiations can also be alternates, although alternates do not modify the proper linguistic structure while differentiators such as laughter may cover whole stretches of speech combined with primary qualities and qualifiers distorting it. They differentiate among psychological states in but are not always universal. For example, in Spanish we can say I and in English we can say ouch for the same phenomena. So we see that paralanguage is an important aspect of nonverbal communication. It passes on a clear understanding of our emotions, moods, background, etc. to the listener. Language is never a neutral commodity. Paralanguage sensitizes us to the various dimensions language can have. Thank you.